Hi everyone, today's Freedom at the Mat class is going to be about loved ones who have gone on before us. How we can love them, love their spirits, keep their spirits alive, continue to bring joy to them, and continue to channel their spirits and channel the joy that they bring to us. So I'm grateful that you're here at Freedom at the Mat. I hope you join us for the entire class with the reading, the journaling, the yoga asana, and the affirmation. Let's get started. Welcome to Freedom at the Mat. I'm Olivia Scott, and I'm grateful that you have chosen to spend some time with not just me, but with you today. This class is specifically dedicated to everyone who has lost a loved one, everyone who still may be mourning the loss of that loved one. And I know that right now in particular, I'm videotaping this video during the time of the pandemic when we've lost many of the resources that we would use to be able to push through the pain of death, the gathering of friends and family, having food delivered to our homes, having flowers delivered, there's many things that have been interrupted that would help us get through these losses. So whether you have lost someone recently or not so recently, I pray and hope that this particular video and this class will aid you in your healing in some way. So I'm reading from Marianne Williamson's day 333 in A Year of Miracles. And she has this to say, I bless my loved ones who have passed beyond the veil. Today I think thoughts of love towards those who touched my life. And I wanna pause, I'm gonna pause throughout to share some thoughts that I have. You know, no matter if the person you lost was someone that was a friend or a loved one for 30 years, 50 years, or perhaps it was a short limb, you know, my heart goes out to everyone who has lost someone. I think when we lose someone, what we lose is the hope of what we had in store. We plan for our lives with that person and our lives for ourselves with that person until we lose hope. There's so much that we lost from that. Whether it was an infant, I bless any parents, any who watch this, have lost a small child. You lose hope. But what I know is that every human being that has come through this earth plane they were a spiritual being that was having a human experience. And so with that, I want to give honor and reverence for every human being that's come through the earth plane because they left us with a spirit. They touched our lives in some way. She goes on to say, you know, I think thoughts of love towards those who touched my life while here on earth and then continue on their journey. What we all know is that there are two things that are certain. That's life and that's death. We also know that we as mere mortals have absolutely no control over the entrance and over the exit of those that we will grow to love and those that we've loved in the past. So she says, my family and my friends, my beloved companions, may they feel my love where they are now and in my heart, may I feel theirs. Death is but an illusion of the mortal mind, for truly life goes on forever. I know those are just words. Those are just words. It's hard to actually believe that when you've lost someone that you loved, someone that was part of your daily life. But I want us to challenge ourselves for a moment to believe that the people that we love, they're still available to us. They're still accessible to us. As the body drops, the spirit soars to new heights. Neither sickness nor death will tempt me to forget 
that in God, there is life unending. And she has this prayer that she prays for all of us who are dealing with loved ones that have gone on. May God fill my heart with an inner knowing that those who have left have not left at all, for they remain in his heart and in mine. I feel peace as I remember them, for I know they are not gone. May they and I rest peacefully in the arms of God. And so what I want you to do, want us to do for our class journal prompt for today, I want you to find your journal, and I hope it's not too far, okay? Get your journal. And I want you to, of course, open journal, get a pencil, I hope you have something nearby. And I've got five specific prompts that I want us to work through today. Now, if you've lost multiple people, I invite you to do these series of four to five questions for every person versus kind of jumbling them. But it's totally up to you. You know, I'm just a facilitator. However it feels right for you to do this, please do it. So here's what I've got for us. I've got, number one, I want you to think of the person that you've lost in life, okay? That's still with you in spirit. And think of something that that person did to make you laugh. That's something they did to make you smile. I think of my mother who passed about 20 years ago. And when she died, of course it was a little early for me, I thought, but I was happy that she was no longer dealing with being on earth and the pains and trials and tribulations that she suffered with on earth. But I think about what she would do to make me laugh. She would call me Spookadook, that was her nickname for me, Spookadook, or Ladybug. Those were the two nicknames she had for me. And there was a lilt in her voice when she said, Sprook, or she said, Lily. I knew that there was something joyous that she had to share, talk about when she called my name from the other room, when she called my name in that way. Now, when she called me Lily, I knew I was in trouble. That was gonna be a problem, okay? But Sprook, Lily, Ladybug, that lilt in her voice, those were the things that made me smile. And it goes into the second question I have, which is, how did they bring you joy? <sighs> you know, there is a scripture in the Bible, I'm not a Bible quoting person, so I'm not gonna get it right, but it talks about think on whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is fair, whatever is just, whatever is good. Think on these things. And so I invite us today to think about our loved ones and the things they did when they were here on earth that brought us joy because no one can ever take those memories away from us. Okay. Number three, how did you bring them joy? Right? Because if you think about a relationship, a relationship is reciprocal. So just as my mother brought me joy in the ways I mentioned, there were ways I brought her joy too. I brought her joy by living a life that she prepared me for and living a life fully and freely and independently. So when I think about my number four thing, which is how I can still bring her joy, it's in living my life in the ways that I know brought her joy, right? And number five, how can you access that person's spirit? You know, I transitioned to my cousin for this one. So I had a cousin, her name was Nicole Elise, and she passed a little too soon for me as well, about four years ago. And um, her parents kept her room as is. Beautiful room, beautiful bedroom with her, beautiful portrait, beautiful woman, beautiful eyes. And when she first passed, I didn't want to go in the room. I didn't want to, I didn't want to deal with it. But now I'm so glad they kept that room because her spirit remains. I hear her giggle. I see her bed. 
I think of us laughing and playing and talking about boys in the bed, girl, let me tell I think of those things and I access her spirit in her room. I think of my sister who passed last year. Again, a little soon for me, but God has a better plan, master plan. And I think about accessing her spirit. She is the first person who taught me how to use incense. So when I'm burning my candles and when I'm lighting my incense, I'm accessing, accessing my sister's spirit. She also taught me how to do my hair when I was nine years old. So when I'm doing my new hairstyles, I'm doing my rollers, and I'm doing my little whatever, and I'm painting my nails, she told me how to paint my nails, I'm accessing her spirit. So there's certain things that you can do to access and channel your spirit. All is not lost when we lose those that we love. So I invite you to spend some time, if you need more time than we have in this particular class right now to access the spirit of your loved ones. But I invite you to spend the time, dedicate the time to the ones that you love and know that all is not lost. I'll see you at the map. Thank you so much for choosing to be on this healing journey with me. And I hope that today has been a blessing in some way. And I honor you for dedicating some time to yourself and to your loved ones. Namaste. Hey there. All right, so make sure you've got your mat, you've got your towel, blocks, water, candle, and I'll meet you on the mat. Today's class is super, super restorative. Not gonna be doing a whole lot. I want you to find yourself in an easy pose and just connect with your breath. For the first few minutes of today's class and for much of the class, let's just connect with our breath. Close your eyes. Open your palms and try to connect with your inner spirit right now. Your heart may be heavy. You know, this video theme is about blessing those who've gone on beyond the veil. So I'm trusting if you're watching this, it's because you indeed have lost someone dear to you. My heart and my sympathies and my prayers are extended to you. And today is your time for yourself. I've just bowed my head, setting an intention for today's class. You don't have to look at me for the first few minutes of this class. I am just your facilitator of your me time for this segment. I'm happy to see you here. You finding time and space for yourself, just a little refuge on the mat, perhaps in, a, in your bedroom or in the living room or anywhere is a treat. Take your right ear to your right shoulder, bring your neck back to neutral, drop your left ear to the left side, eyes closed if you can. Once more, right ear to right shoulder. Once more, left ear to left shoulder. We're gonna rotate our neck, just slow rotations. Open your neck, continue rotating slowly. A lot of times we hold so much stress, rotate the other way, we don't even realize it. And what I know from my own experience is if you have just buried a loved one, you likely have taken on stress, a lot of stress. I want you to inhale and exhale, bring those shoulders up and back, and then back and forward. I'm feeling some stress, which is why I'm scrunching up. Take one arm, place it across your chest, and switch. Today is not about perfection, I'm gonna tell you that right now. 
I want you to bring the soles of your feet together, open your hips, however much you get some hip opening. But it's not about any perfection today, okay? It's just about you showing up for yourself and being gentle with yourself and your spirit. Make sure your spine is erect. I have a candle before me to gaze into the flicker. And for a few moments, I just wanna gaze into the flicker of the flame, losing my thoughts, resting my mind, praying for restoration of my heart as I've recently lost a couple of people that were very dear to me as well. death is so hard and even if you didn't know the people very well your heart still may be bleeding so I want you to take this time for yourself let the ministry of music behind you I have some beautiful music behind me just ministering to my soul I'm crossing my hand across my chest it's the freedom mudra I often feel comfort when I have my hand across my chest in this way, I invite you to do the same. Leaving one hand on your heart, the other on your abdomen, (sighs) feeling a little bit of joy for the breath that you breathe and Just restoring your heart. I know sometimes when you lose someone, you feel like your heart has been ripped out from your chest, but you still have a heartbeat. You can still honor your loved ones through your life. I'm gonna move this candle out of the way so there are no accidents with the flame. I have my book and my journal nearby in case I wanna write something down. If you guys want to write something, I invite you to feel free to do so. Extend your left leg out, right sole of the feet into the thigh, unhunch your shoulders, arms overhead, and you reach towards your left leg. Now, you may end up resting your hands on your thigh, on your knee, or on your calf. You're just doing a nice stretch of your lower back. Again, we're not going to be strenuous with ourselves today. Allow that left forearm to fall on the outside of your calf. Open up the right hand, right shoulder, and you look up to the heavens to where we find our help. Look up to the heavens where your loved one is. Extend a hand to them and release the hand back down. Slowly but surely walk your fingertips up your leg and bring the soles of the feet together for a moment and extend to the right leg, left sole of your foot on the inside, arms up, turn your torso, reach down. And again, wherever your hands fall, wherever your body allows you to go, allow it. Leave that right forearm on the mat. Open the left shoulder, open the left side body. You can look straight ahead at me, or you can look down. Or if you'd like, you can also look up towards your fingertips. Up to you, whatever's most comfortable for your neck. Release that top arm, loving that right leg bowing before it. Soles the feet together once more. Look up and exhale, fall forward. Folding forward, releasing your back, releasing your neck. Nice stretch across the entire back opening the hips a little bit more. We hold so much emotion in our hips. Being gentle with yourself. And letting the music minister to your soul. Extend your leg in front of you, either one. I'm starting with my left leg in front and crossing the right one across. Hook your elbow around 
the bench knee. I'm gonna show you kind of what's happening here. I've got a straight back, hooking the elbow around my right knee and then turning to my right. Now, if you want more of a stretch, you can take your tricep and put it on the inside of your thigh, but that's not necessary for today. Changing your legs, hooking that right elbow around the left knee, and then rotating to your left. Arms lifted up, reach up, fall forward, and release. Again, wherever your hands fall, it's okay. For today, it is well wherever your hands fall. I'm sending blessings and greetings to you for healing and restoration. Now, if you need some support for this next posture, right, a little bit of support, take a towel, hopefully you had nearby, starting with my left knee, extending the right leg pointed out, and then extending the right arm over head, allowing that left arm to fall by my side, opening that right side body, extending that right leg, keeping the hip square, all right? Reach the arm over. Nice side body stretch. And on the opposite side, extending the leg long, arm up. And on this side, we're gonna reach the arm up and down. Feeling the stretch across the body and now reaching the arm over, left arm over, arms straight out to a T. Open your palms as you look to the heavens from which your help comes from right now. Oh, and releasing the left palm wherever it falls on your leg, right arm over, arms back to a T, and going to equal things out on the opposite side. Extend the right leg, arms to a T. Let's release the left hand down by your side, arm over, arms to a T, and release the right hand down. And let's open up the left side body. Gotta treat our body right. Open those palms, looking up, giving gratitude for all that remains. Continue to breathe. Arms up, lift up, eyes up, open your neck, hands in prayer pose. Prayer pose to heart, close your eyes. Sending loving energy to yourself and the spirit of your loved one. Invite them here with you today on the mat. Go ahead and move the towel out of the way. And now staying here, right? With your knees on the mat. You still may need that towel, totally up to you. Oh, people hate this posture, but we are stretching our toes. When was the last time you stretched your toes? Just for a moment on your heels. I'm gonna move that candle before my hair burns up. Still on my toes, coming out of the posture, toes tucked, come back to your first down dog of the day. We're gonna do a very simple down dog cobra sequence, not going to do very much here, just kind of getting some motion to the body. Standing in your down dog, lifting from your tailbone, inhale, come to your plank pose. You don't have to stay here very long, drop the knees, untuck the toes, bend the elbows, bring your entire body down to the mat, 
elbows bent, forehead down, and then press through the palms, straightening the elbows, looking up and to your cobra. Tuck the toes, bend from your hips, from your tailbone, lift the tailbone up, bring your body like an inverted V and you're down dog. Come forward once more, strong arms, go ahead and bend at the knees, untuck the toes, bend the elbows, come down, forehead down, and push up through the palms once more. Cobra pose. Nice back bend and tuck the toes, come back once more. This time, come a little deeper into your down dog, okay? Whatever you have to do, adjust the hands, but bring your head between your biceps even further. Now release the posture. We're gonna hold the plank for a little bit more here before we release, bending at the elbows, untucking the toes. And bend at the elbows, come on down. You got it. You know what to do now. Nice back bend, open the heart, open the sternum, open the neck. Activate your glutes. Looking up to the heavens. Channel the spirit of your loved one. Forehead down, elbows bent. Go ahead and come into the frog pose. Make your arms into a cactus. Bring the right knee out to your right and turn your left ear down. Opening the hips. Again, the hips is where we hold a lot of our emotions. Healing postures, nothing too strenuous. And switch. Come to the other side. Bring the left knee out. Turn the right ear down. Be gentle with yourself. If your knee can't come up that high, it's okay. Wherever it comes, you're just opening up your hip. Beautiful. Pressing up, pressing back down onto the mat. Come to a seated pose, easy pose. Open the palms on your knees. Allow any fragrance in your room to fill your nostrils. And then just begin to do some torso circles. Allow any music in the room to fill your ears. This is your space. And rotate in the opposite direction. While I'm doing this, I want to tell you the mat that I'm on today is a Devo mat. And it's a devotional mat with some beautiful scriptures that I love. Let God go before you. He will lead you. Open those palms. Let God go behind you. He will protect you. Go with God. Bring the candle in front of you as we close out our practice for today. Opening your palms. If you'd like to open your eyes and stare into the candle, feel free to do so. Whatever support you need around you, I invite you to find that right now. The Freedom Mudra is one of my favorite ones. What I'm doing right now when I cross my hands across my chest, I feel so much safety, so much comfort. I invite you to do the same if that feels good to you. I'm going to move that candle one more time and find my way to the mat. Find yourself to the mat. Extend your legs long. Bring the right knee into your chest. And then the left hand, bring it across, that right knee across your side body. And right hand is extended. Look over to your right as your left knee softens to the ground. And switch, right leg long, left knee into your body. Bring that right knee across your body with your, I'm sorry, the left knee across your body with the right hand and look to your left.
and bring both knees to your chest. Remind yourself of your final intention for today's class. Elevate the legs, arms out to your side, and slowly to the count of 10, release the feet down to the ground. Nice work for the abs, contract your abs. Make sure the back stays connected with the mat and release into your final Shavasana. Open the palms, open your legs, whatever you need at this point. I invite you to leave it at the mat today. Shavasana, the thoughts are yours. I won't say much. Feel free to stay here, but if you'd like and you want to go ahead and end the practice, you got to go. Turn over on your right hand side, extend that right hand along. Take your right ear on your right bicep. And then left hand falls either on top of your hips or on the mat in front of you, eyes closed. Knees closer to you in a fetal position. Think about your loved one right now. Channel their spirit. That hand that's open, imagine that they're there and they're reaching for your hand. Allow them to touch your hand right now. Channel their spirit. And press up if you're ready to go. Go ahead, keep the eyes closed though. Come up to a seated position, easy pose. Giving gratitude for your loved one who was such a part of your life or someone who you encountered. Freedom Mudra once more, giving gratitude for showing up today for yourself. Gratitude to you. Namaste. Thank you for joining today's Freedom at the Mat class. I know that it was a neat class and that it wasn't overly strenuous or overly complicated, but it was dedicated to our soul's healing. We needed this class. I needed this class, quite honestly. And I pray and hope from the most sincerest place in my heart and in my spirit that as you journey through your life after having lost your loved one, that you still make space for yourself to feel however you feel. You have to heal. And I know from having lost people myself that when you are a strong person, or just a lot of people, people tend to come to us and we have to shoulder the emotions of other people. And sometimes you don't have a place for yourself. And that's actually part of how the name Freedom at the Mat came. I'll tell you that at the time. But the mat is always available to you as a refuge and as a retreat from other people and just from other spaces. You've got like six feet of space to be able to leave your cares at the mat. My prayer for you is that you're comforted in the knowledge that your loved one, you are blessed from having had your loved one, right? We don't feel so great right now having just lost a loved one. And I'm not gonna promise you that in time, it's gonna get better mother's been gone now for 19 years and there are sometimes it's just as painful as if she just passed yesterday. So I can't take that and that's not my role but here I do feel that one of the things that was necessary for me to do was to create a space for us all together virtually online and be able to connect on the map. In terms of an affirmation for today, I want us to honor our loved ones by honoring ourselves. The affirmation I have is I honor name by honoring name, right? So how it goes is I honor myself, okay? Maybe you just say myself, by honoring my mother, right? Because we're still here. We're still on this planet, we're still on this earth plane. And since we're still here, that means that our lives have been blessed with the spirits that we are lucky to have encountered, blessed to have encountered. So while I'm still here on this earth, 
I'm gonna honor my mother and everything that she poured into me beyond just birthing me through the birth canal, right? But everything she poured into me, I am going to honor myself by honoring my sister Brucey, who I love, who I lost last year. Difficult losses like your siblings, your parents, any children you may have lost, God bless you. Those are difficult losses. Your best friend, your close friend, relatives, these are difficult losses. And, you know, I think about having lost my cousin, Nicole Elise, right? Very unfortunate for me about three years ago in the entire family. But when we talked about accessing the spirit, we talked about earlier in the video, when I go to her parents' house and they have lovingly left her room in place. When I first, when she first asked, I didn't want to go in that room, right? I didn't want to. But now, when I go in that room and I see her beautiful face and her beautiful eyes, and I see her bed, and jump in her bed, her spirit I'm able to access. So that's what I was talking about earlier in the video about access. Where can you go to access someone's spirit, right? And I honor myself by honoring Ball Smith. So these are four people that I've lost that I am gonna continue living with their spirits in me because I was so blessed to have had them on my journey. So I invite you to honor yourself by honoring the pieces of their spirits that they left with you. God bless you. May God be with you.